Nada, if you have the uh, if you do have the brackets by chance, if you want to throw them on the screen here, I'm very much looking forward to the event. This is the biggest event in the regular season this season in men's college basketball. I'll fly out today. Games will get going. They'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday is an off day, and then championships and all that good stuff will be going down on Sunday. You'll have the likes of Duke and Carolina, Gonzaga, Xavier, Florida, Michigan State, Alabama. All sorts of them. Here's one bracket. This is uh, UNC. This is Thursday. Best one in this one. This is uh, is this the le- I, I I can't even keep track. I think this is the Invitational. Um, Carolina, Portland, Iowa that's State. The Phil, that, that's the Phil Knight Invitational. That's the Invitational. Iowa State, Nova. These are all where the Blazers play. So there's two venues right next to each other: the Coliseum, where Portland State plays its games, and then the Rose Garden. Or the Moda Center. Moda the Center. Um, the, you can literally walk between both venues, and that's what I'll be. I'll be bouncing back and forth uh, throughout uh, throughout the event. There's also um, two four-team women's brackets. It's a humongous basketball event, and uh, obviously, all these schools have affiliations. Not to throw that back up. Throw that bracket back up. I got. I was gonna keep strolling through here. I was gonna make. Uh, I was gonna make my predictions. He, he dropped it out on me. If you still got it there, buddy. Um, Carolina and Duke are at the top of their respective brackets. Um, I don't think both of them will wind up winning it, but I do think UNC will be the one that takes home the Invitational. Here it is again if you're watching uh, live on YouTube or after the fact on YouTube there. So UNC, then Iowa State, Nova. We'll see what happens with Nova. Nova's obviously one to watch. Some stumbles early. Iowa State, some intrigue there. Bottom half of the bracket, UConn, Oregon. Very intriguing matchup. I want to say those two teams played each other in the PK-80 because who was it? UConn beat <laughs> – dude, do you – I don't know if you remember this or not. I remember UConn, everything. I'm almost positive those teams played in the PK-80 because UConn had a player. Let me look this up. He th- they, Like, UConn beat Oregon. Right. And then one of UConn's players, like, said – Sorry for beating Oregon, Phil Knight, but thanks for the gear. Like he roasted, he roasted him, and I think that they had to like the next day. They were like, "Please apologize to the billionaire who who is putting on this this glorious tournament." Who was that? Um, Christian Vital. That's who it was. Christian Vital did it. I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but they beat Oregon. And he was like, yo, I'm sorry about beating Oregon, but Phil Knight, thank you so much for the shoes and all that gear. That seems, that seems pretty harmless to me. It was harmless. I agree. I agree. But I do remember that being a thing when that happened. I will take Oregon to get vengeance. And then Alabama-Michigan State, super intriguing game on Thursday there. Ultimately, I'll say North Carolina. Give me UNC over Bama, although Bama winning this would not be surprising to me. Obviously, Bama, Michigan State is the best in this particular bracket there. All these games will be the first round games will be at the Rose Garden. If you're watching, you can see the graphics. Some of those games will move to the Coliseum. The championship game will be a seven Eastern tip on Sunday. We'll see. Not if you got the legacy bracket, feel free to to bring that up as well. This is the one that has. If, if Duke and Gonzaga win their first two games, it will be a Duke versus Gonzaga matchup in the championship on Sunday. Obviously we've got a ton of football coming Thanksgiving, Friday, Saturday, college and pro. It's a huge football weekend, but man, the hoops are just really, really good. Okay. So here we have the legacy Duke, Oregon state gets this thing going on Thursday. That's a noon Eastern. No, it's a three Eastern noon Pacific. I was about to say, there's no way they're tipping that thing off at 9am tomorrow. Um, Florida Xavier, a couple of coaches in their new spots, golden and Sean Miller. There, that's I, that's the that to me that's the best Thursday game in the legacy bottom half of the bracket Purdue West Virginia and then Portland State Gonzaga uh, I w- I'll I'll take Gonzaga to ultimately beat Duke in the legacy bracket and so I'll have Gonzaga and UNC wind up winning these it'll be that'll be my prediction there but uh, you know I want to see uh, Duke is an intriguing one could could Florida or Xavier potentially you know play spoiler I don't think that's out of the question there and then Gonzaga it, it came back and played strong recently um I'd like to see a Gonzaga Purdue matchup on Friday that would be that would be pretty pretty intriguing overall so it's yeah the the event is tremendous it's in celebration of Phil Knight who will soon turn 85 I don't believe he's 85 yet um uh, what are your thoughts on uh, on what's going to go down in Portland here, my man? Well, it, it again, two eight-team tournaments played in Portland, and you're going to be able to see, and I suspect you will see, uh, the teams that are ranked number two, number five, 
number six, number 13, number 20, number 21, and number 22 in the CBS Sports Top 25 and One Daily College Basketball Rankings. Those teams are number two, North Carolina, number five, Gonzaga, number six, Michigan State, number 13, Duke, number 20, Alabama, number 21, Purdue, number 22, UConn. So you're going to see basically one-third of the top 22 of the top 25 and one over the next four days. Um, so that's tremendous. Like if you're trying to pick a place to go to see as many good teams as you can go, yeah. Uh, as you can see, you can't you can't do better uh, than Portland. Um, I'm with you. Like the the best thing we could get from this would be Duke Gonzaga, and I guess with all due respect to everybody, North Carolina Michigan State, but that would that be an would, incredible way. Biggest, yeah, mainstream appeal. I I think Bama Carolina would be. A better game probably but you're right michigan state and carolina is the most appealing draw yeah and so you know you get a, a a duke team that you know lost its champions classic game but has won everything else um kyle filipowski uh, you know has been unbelievable I, I sort of mentioned this in i think tuesday's top 25 and one you know he's averaging uh he's leading the team in points per game leading the team in rebounds per game and he was a consensus five-star guy. Like, I'm not trying to suggest or pretend he was off the radar or, or under underrated. I mean, he was a consensus, you know, five-star prospect, top five player in the class of 2022. But technically, the third best recruit in Duke's class and is now looking like, and it's still early. We'll see what Derek Lively does, Derek Whitehead. But like right now, undeniably right now, he is Duke's best player, best freshman, and arguably the best freshman in the entire country. Certainly um, uh, the, one of the biggest producers um, among freshmen in the entire country. And it's a little bit like the R.J. Barrett, Cam Reddish, Zion Williamson class in the sense that they were all three heralded guys. But Zion was the lowest, was, was the third rated prospect in that class. He was rated coming into college behind RJ, behind Cam. And it was very clear early, oh, no, he's their best player. Even though RJ Barrett was also awesome and Cam Reddish had his moments. But Zion was clearly the best player. Now, Zion was clearly the best player and, be, and, and quickly became the best prospect. I don't know that Filipowski is ever going to be the best prospect. I'm not ruling it out, but I, I'm, I'm skeptical of that. But he looks like their best player so far. So that's been an interesting early season development uh, in Durham. Uh, in our chat, a uh, fellow named Mike Mannix says he is Kyle Filipowski's high school coach. So I'm going to take I'm going to take you for your word. I mean, really, anyone could hop in and, and, and make that claim. But uh, but if that's the case, thanks for watching the pod and we appreciate it. And I'm very interested to see Filipowski up close and personal.